everyone, welcome to my Entertainment District Arc review for Demon Slayer. Holy crap, what an arc. And you may have noticed that I did not react to the finale. Uh, the sole reason for that being I already knew everything that was pretty much, you know, was going to happen. And the one thing I was excited to react to didn't even happen. And I won't say what that is in case you don't know, but uh, it's going to be probably the first scene of <laughs> season three. So I'm really hyped for that. And I still wanted to talk about it, what I thought about it, what I loved, what I didn't love. Not that there wasn't anything I didn't love because this was just some god tier animation from Ufotable. Uh, I believe it's how you pronounce that uh, animation studio's name. But we have a lot to talk about. I'm going to break up this review in certain sections to make it more of a easy flowing review. No spoilers, of course, for uh, season 3, 4, 5, or the manga in general. I'll try to keep this as spoiler free as possible so you don't need to worry if you haven't read the manga. And without further delay, let's get into the review. So for this first section of my review, I'm going to keep it really quick because nothing else needs to be really said other than what I'm about to say. And something that draws so many people into Demon Slayer, myself included, is the animation. The animation is god tier. I don't need to say anything beyond that because this arc right here, even Mugen Train aside, because Mugen Train was kind of its own, you know, story arc, and yes, it was season two, uh, but we're going to be covering the Entertainment District arc here, but um, the Entertainment District arc alone, the animation just kept getting better. Uh, episode 10 or episode 17, if you're, you know, including the Mugen Train uh, episodes with um, the whole season two as a whole, uh, that, that episode is just... <laughs> I don't know how you can translate a manga panel into that because as you're reading a manga you can tell there's a fight going on but when you're watching an anime translate fights to the scale and level of eye orgasm that Ufotable does here it, it is truly incredible I, I cannot even put into words how awestruck it was being a manga reader because it feels like you're watching something you're watching that same mangle uh mangle that same manga panel uh be brought to life and it feels like you're watching it for the first time because of how good they do it uh and it's just so incredible uh that's all I need to say about that I have no drawbacks with the animation because there, there are times where the animation's flowing so well it's beautiful it's gorgeous Cuts and it's And then you have really derpy images like the one you're seeing right now, like Tanjiro maybe, that's just so funny and so lighthearted and I like that you know, Ufotable uh, can balance this so well because yes, animation, good looking animation is very important, but sometimes it's nice to take a step back and explore times with the characters and uh, speaking of characters, that's what I want to talk about next. So outside of the god tier animation that Demon Slayer Season 2 brought to the table, I think the characters is what really rooted me into this story. So we follow a new Hashira, and yes, we've met him previously, that being Tengen Azui, the sound Hashira. Uh, when I first met him, I hadn't started reading the manga yet, so... Uh, in, you know, episode one of the Entertainment District arc, he slaps a girl's ass and he's like, I call me the God of Flashiness. I'm like, dude, who the hell do you think you are? You're no Rengoku. Uh, and I thought that the way they developed his character throughout this arc was so beautifully done. You learned he had three women, uh, three women, three wives. And right off the bat, I'm just like, man, this guy really doesn't respect women. He, he, you know, he slaps this girl's ass in the first episode. He has three wives. Uh, he must be kind of a jerk. But then you learn... How much of a gentleman and how much this guy really does care about the people around him. How much he treats everyone with respect if he likes them. And the wives are all treated equally with respect. They love one another. They love Tengen. Tengen loves them back. And I think, you know, when Tengen is explaining his backstory to Gyotoro, who we meet way later, uh, he says, my brother was the exact opposite of me. I didn't want to be like that. My brother, who, you know, me and my brother were the only ones who survived this uh, Shinobi family, you know, he was the exact 
embodiment of what I don't want to be. He's exactly my father. He treats his women like they're disposable. He treats them with no respect. He doesn't love them. They're just a tool for him to enjoy. That kind of reminds me because when I first, you know, met Tengen in episode one of this arc, uh, I kind of viewed Tengen the same way Tanjiro did. Tanjiro looked up at him and was like, you're no Rengoku. You, there's no way you're Hashira. I don't look up to you. And then Tengen's like, don't <clears throat> me. And then there's a moment in the show when... Tengen says, these are my, you know, these are my apprentices. I love them. I'm going to take care of them just to scare Daki and Gyoto. I'll be like, no, the, these, you know, these people are mine. We are going to fuck you up. And Tanjiro turns, looks up at Tengen and he just sees Rengoku in him. And it was at that moment, same with Tanjiro. And I think that was supposed to happen. Us being the audience, we go, oh, Tengen, you really are the god of flashiness. And then you just from that point on, it's you know, go kick some ass, Tengen, and I, I was so worried that we aren't going to see the Sound Hashira do Sound Hashira stuff, because we'd only seen him use one uh, breathing movement, uh, or breathing technique, and that's when he slammed the hole in the ground to go help uh, Inosuke out, when he followed uh, Daki, or the um, fragment of Daki, down in the uh, uh, little cave where she was storing all the people in her belts. To me, uh, Tengen was probably my favorite episode of the arc. He really did shine, and there was a lot of character development and character backstory that went into him, and I'm really, I, I really enjoyed his time on the show and spending all that uh, great time with him, all the fights, and especially that, you know, that penultimate episode, uh, that constant, you know, just fighting, no talking with him and Gyotoro, and, you know, the Adaki and Zenetsu and Inosuke over there doing their thing, and I thought the balance between spending time with Tengen so you could care about his character and how, you know, Rengoku affected, his death affected not just Tanjiro, Inosuke, and Zenetsu, but the Hashiras around him, because now, you know, because of Rengoku's death, that not only furthered Tondra as a character, but more importantly, it furthered um, Tengen as a character, because if you stayed after the credits and, you know, they had the nee nee little post-credit joke scene thingies, there were some that were just like, I don't know what to do, Rengoku, I don't want to end up like you, like, I will make it my job to protect uh, these kids that looked up to you, and Rengoku's like, haha, you have too many wives though, but I really do, you know, I, I look up to you, I respect you, you're gonna make a fine swordsman, and I think that a lot of people under, you know, underlook that and don't realize how much Rengoku's death didn't just affect Tanjiro, it affected everybody, it affects the story going forward, and as a manga reader, no spoilers, uh, of course, it still is having its effects, you know, Rengoku's death was something that is so pivotal, and although that was a separate arc, it still was woven in so well into the story of Tengen and the Entertainment District. So I can't talk about characters without including, you know, the obvious, you know, original four, that being Tanjiro, Nezuko, Zenetsu, and Inosuke. Man, they really did have a time uh, shine, every single one of them. So Zenetsu obviously cried a lot this uh, season. Uh, he definitely had his time to shine with, you know, Thunderclap and Flash, godlike speed. Holy crap, that was insane. I mean, how can you not enjoy something like this? <laughs> And then Inosuke, who's, you know, I was like, I'm Lord Inosuke, um, you, you know, these are my underlings, fear me, I'm gonna become a Hashira, I'm gonna kill you, and, you know, he's very, um, bombastic, I, I, I think is a good word to describe Inosuke, but this season, he literally put his life on the line, and one of the most, I think, funny aspects of his character was he charged straight toward Daki and he was sewed, you know, stripped, cut her head off like it was nothing, like as if he was using a saw. And he literally had no defense because he completely relied on his underlings to protect him. So now that I'm talking about this, I think there was a lot of character development in the fights. And I think I, that's why I said earlier on that anime, its story is told in the fights. You know, a lot of live action shows and a lot of shows, you know, in action movies we see nowadays, uh, it's, you know, the characters talk. They realize they have a difference, and then they fight, and then whoever wins, the consequences of that follows. But with anime, that's not how it works. You know, you you have times where they talk, and they they like, hey, why are we fighting? Like, you know, we're developing our characters as this is going. They're, you know, that, that, that's what I'm trying to say. Is that's what I love about shonen anime because it's not just powers that are getting increased. Uh, it's it's the characters, and you really saw that with Inosuke when he's running and charging at Daki with no care about his defense because he trusted Zenetsu and uh, Tanjiro, who he referred to as his underlings many times before and after, uh, to protect him. 
and I thought that was a huge moment for Inosuke as a character. And in Zenetsu's time to shine is coming too, because although he had some great moments here, uh, he woke up and was like, my leg's sore, I don't know what happened, uh, please Tanjiro help me. And although Zenetsu really didn't have much going on, actually he did, he did have a time to shine, because think about it, when uh, the girl, and he was awake for this, when Doki pulled that girl's ear and she started making a bleed, Zenetsu, who is terrified of lower demons, mind you, grabbed Doki, who was an upper ranked uh, demon, and said, don't do that to a girl, don't disrespect girls, no matter what you think she did, that's not okay. So Zenetsu even had some character development. And Tanjiro, you know, with Nezuko going through, I, I kind of want to group Tanjiro and Nezuko together, because they both went through so much this season, uh, specifically this arc with, you know, Nezuko's transformation into her next demon form, uh, and Tanjiro had to hold back and protect Nezuko, and uh, put his life on the line to protect his little sister, because if his little sister dies, maybe not everything he's done was all for nothing, but definitely his whole purpose of this kind of just falls apart. So you really kind of learn about Tanjiro's uh, mental, uh, not breakdown, but fight. He has an inner battle going between protecting Nezuko and protecting all the people around him, because Nezuko is one person, but you have the entire Demon Slayer core, uh, you know, core. You have all of the people in the entertainment district. You have a Nosuke, the Netsu, a t you know, a Hashira, who's probably more vital than Nezuko. But although Nezuko is far more personally vital to Tanjiro, and I think that's going to be explored later on when you get to the Swordsmith Village arc. If you guys haven't uh, read the manga yet, you'll know what I mean once we get there. You'll know exactly what I mean once you get there. Uh, but I think that even Tanjiro, even if it wasn't explicitly stated, I think that, you know, the anime doesn't treat the audience like they're dumb. They don't need to specifically spoon feed you every single thing. It's kind of there for you to interpret. And I think Tanjiro, although he did a lot of fighting, he had that mark change, which was so fucking badass. Uh, he's also had an inner battle between protecting Nezuko and protecting uh, all the other people that were also in the line of fire of Upper Moon Six. <laughs> So lastly, I want to talk about Gyotoro and Daki. Um, wow, what a fight. What two characters. I did not know much about their backstory at all. I don't think I really knew anything at all. But, you know, Demon Slayer is definitely infamous for, you know, their demons they killed. And then you get their backstory. And my god, what a tragic backstory. You really feel... For the demons as they're dying and how they're arguing and the most beautiful moment of the arc i think for sure is when Gyotoro tells daki or her real name ume i believe uh he says i you should have never been i, I wish you had never been born and tanjiro covers his mouth and says very calmly very sincerely you don't mean that like that's your sister and even though no one else is going to forgive you for what you guys did and all the humans you've consumed and killed you guys need to have each other's back and I thought that was probably the most beautiful moment narratively of the arc. And I think that if you go back and rewatch the Entertainment District arc, all the things they say, all the, uh, oh, you've got three wives as he's scratching himself and he's like freaking out and getting pissed off and uh, he's protecting his little sister. And I, I think it really adds, it's a, it gives Demon Slayer such a rewatchable aspect to this anime that a lot of other animes don't have. Because, yes, it's kind of a trope where the demons are dead. Okay, now go cry for them. And why not just show that beforehand so we can care about the demons before they die? But I think that it gives the show so much more depth and uh, rewatchability that no other show or movie I have seen uh, has. <laughs> So let's talk about the narrative for this arc. So all the people, they go to the Entertainment District arc to find a demon. They don't know it's a 12 Kazuki yet, uh, but they're looking for a demon. They find out that it is, in fact, Upper Moon 6, the strongest demon Tanjiro has faced so far, that any Hashira alive, I believe, has faced so far outside of Rengoku. Um, and I, I, I truly think that really shapes Demon Slayer going forward. And I can't say why, uh, just for spoilers, but I think that this arc is probably the most important arc going forward because it really shows you what a 12 Kazuki, an upper 12 Kazuki, uh, is truly capable of. And that's all I'll say about the narrative because saying anything else will kind of spoil it. And I think I'm pronouncing that right. A 12 Kazuki, Kazuki, 
I believe, and then you see Upper Moon 6 show up and, you know, turn Gyotoro and Daki into a demon, and, you know, now he's Upper 2, uh, but back then he was Upper 6, and I'm really excited to see my boy Duma again, because, oh my god, he's voiced by Light Yagami, and uh, I love that voice actor, and I cannot wait to see more of uh, that character. <laughs> So I think even after finishing season two of Demon Slayer, uh, I think the overarching theme is definitely understanding one another. Uh, because, like I mentioned earlier, there's an infamous trope with Demon Slayer where, you know, they kill the demon and now go cry for that demon, learn about their backstory. But I think throughout this whole show, a lot of people miss the fact that the demons are always screaming at humans. You know, you guys are weak. You stuck. There's no way you'll cut my head off. Go die in a hole. And then you have the Demon Slayers going, you're evil. Uh, you're killing people. Don't underestimate us humans. We're going to cut off your head no matter what. Never give up. And that's the fight. But then as you're learning about these demons, you definitely learn where they're coming from. Nine out of 10 demons on this show have a really sad backstory and you can sit back and go, oh, damn, I, I, that is sad. I, I completely understand why Gyotoro and Daki would have so much hatred towards humans, towards the world, towards uh, people who they feel are more beautiful than them. And, you know, you get a lot of that in this in this arc because even Tanjiro when uh, like I mentioned earlier my favorite moment of the arc is when he covers Gyotoro's mouth and Gyotoro was about to kill not just Tanjiro but everyone there and Tanjiro still showed some sympathy for them and said you don't mean that like don't don't you know cover his mouth don't say that to your sister because you guys need to have each other's back because he saw him and Nezuko in Gyotoro and Daki and I thought that was such a beautiful theme for the episode he understands where they are coming from and I think if Demon Slayer's understood demons a little bit better and they just talked um i'm not saying they were gonna you know they're gonna get along and not want to kill each other but i definitely think they'd have a little bit more sympathy be like oh maybe we need to change the way we're treating people maybe you know with the wind pillar and his brother i won't say who that is they have a lot of beef with each other and i think if they just talked and understood each other that relationship would be better and that's what i'm trying to say is that i think that demon slayer really conveys how sympathizing with someone and understanding someone really goes to show what being human is all about rather than just being weak. <laughs> so by far my favorite episode of the season easily, easily never give up. And do I even need to say why? I think it'd be a lot better just to show you. <laughs> Yo! My god! What the hell is that? Holy <laughs> Let's fucking go! This is epic, dude! What the hell? Oh, fuck! There we go! There we go! Oh my god, Tanjiro, dude. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Entertainment District arc of Demon Slayer. What a phenomenal arc. I think it's definitely better than any arc I've seen so far. I think each arc keeps getting better and better. And there's a lot, I mean a lot of great episodes coming your guys' way if you haven't read the manga. Uh, so definitely if I'd have to give, you know, if I had to give it a rating, it'd be a flashy out of 10. Truly an incredible piece of art from Ufotable. And I cannot wait to see how they animate the coming arcs. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. Let me know your favorite episode was down in the comments below and what you thought about demon slayer season two uh thank you to my current patron to your guys' support really does mean a lot and full reactions to pretty much all of the entertainment district arc outside of the finale is linked down in the description below on my patreon if you'd like to support me thank you again to all my supporters over there and with all that being said i will talk to you guys later in demon slayer season three